So today we're going to work on a build selection tool where you have a little yellow icon to show where you're going to build. It turns red if you cannot build there. And then when you click, it will pop up a menu where you will be able to build this little tower. If you click on a, when it's red, it will not pop up the menu. Also, after you build the tower, it will turn red underneath and you will not be able to build another tower there. So this video will have four different parts. It'll have the part where we make the yellow icon. Then we'll have to move the icon. Then we'll have to have the menu pop up and then we'll have to actually place the turret. So the selection tool is going to be two parts. It's going to have a sprite, which is actually just going to be the same PNG that I used to make this tile. And then we're going to use a shader to make it yellow. And then the other part is going to be just a menu container where we're going to instance and add children for the menu that we're going to make. And that way we can keep track of how many menus that we have. In the sprite, you'll go to the material, you will add a new shader material, and then you add a new shader. You'll make a simple shader here where the shader type, canvas item, will add a current color. You'll have the hint color, add hint color, that way you can just pick a color very easily from this palette. We're going to change this in the GD script, uh, whether we want it to be yellow or red. So in the fragment shader, what we're going to do is we're going to mix the original texture with the current color, which will either be yellow or red, by the amount that the alpha is. And so the reason why you do this alpha trick is, if you remember, this sprite has a lot of clear area in it. And we don't want to turn this entire large square yellow. We want to just turn the tile that you're supposed to see yellow. So we're going to mix it by the amount of alpha that's in the texture. So if it's clear, it's going to mix zero yellow or red into the final color. So after we mix the text, the original texture with the amount of yellow or red that we want, we'll just set the color to that final amount. So in the script, uh, one of the things I like to do is export a color and you can export RGB or RGBA. I did all four, and we set the color to red. That way in the inspector, you can have that same palette that you can pick very easily. Now, one of the things that I did is we're mixing in this color, and I brought the alpha down on it. That way it's a little bit transparent. Otherwise, when you mix in that alpha, it'll be a very saturated yellow, and I wanna just have a more transparent, being able to see what's underneath look. So after you set your red and your yellow, we're going to go down to the physics process. We'll get to the if in menu check in just a little bit. But basically what we're going to do is each frame, we're going to check the mouse position. We're going to translate that mouse position into a tile map position. And we will check to see what tile is underneath. So Currently, this flat tile is number 52 in my tile set. I have a lot of tiles in this tile set. And if it is 52 underneath my mouse, it will be yellow. If it's any other type of tile, it will be red. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the current color, which is just a variable I set up here, uh, the current color to yellow or to red. And then we're going to set the material of the sprite. So we have our sprite material set shader param current color, which you can find right here, the current color to either yellow or red, and it will switch back and forth. So that will change the color, but we've skipped over this line to actually set the position. If you don't have this line, the color will change, but it won't follow. So we set the position to where the position of the tile we're looking at is. So this looks like I'm doing something and undoing the same thing. We're getting the tile that's under the mouse position, and then we're getting the position of that tile. And we will set the position of that box to that tile's position. That's why it kind of snaps to where the mouse is pointed to. So one quick thing I have to point out, so this will probably work a little bit better in just a regular grid map, but in this isometric version, I had to move the Y position down by 32 to make it line up a little bit better. If I don't have that in there, the, the yellow box won't line up to what the mouse is actually hovering over. Uh, and I just found that 
if I just bring the position down, it, the yellow box will follow a lot better. Now we have to build a menu that's going to pop up when we actually click the button. So I went ahead and went into the input map and I just made a new input called action. It's going to be the right button. And I found that the right button just had was a lot less glitchy because when you have a pop-up menu, it responds by default to the left button. And if you have both the left button pop up the menu and select the menu, sometimes you can click things that you don't mean to. So I have the right button on the mouse selected to bring up the menu. So you have to add the items just like before. You add, I added a red turret, a purple turret. This is a pop-up menu node, or instead of a menu button node, uh, this is just the list part of the and no button that goes along with it. I should also mention that I saved the theme from my last video, and I just added it into the theme spot, which is how I got it to look so nice quickly. That's why you should use themes. Pop-up menu buttons by default are not visible. Even if you click them on, it will give you this warning that they will not be visible by default. So in the ready function, I turned them to visible. That way, they just pop up right away. And we'll get to this connection in just a minute. So to actually make the menu pop up, I had to go into the input event function. And if I click the action, so the build ready is just the check to see if the selection tool is yellow or red, basically, um, if you actually can build there. So if you remember, if I hover over the trees, it turns red and I should not be able to pop up a menu. So that's why I turn the, if it's red, it's also going to not be ready to build. So when I click the button, it has to actually be yellow when I click it to actually build the tower. How I want this to work is when I right click, if I right click up here while a menu is already up, I don't want another menu to appear immediately. So I check to see if there already is a child in the menu container. If there is, I clear it with this helper function, which I made a helper function since I'll use it later again to clear out the container. Uh, and all this does is it loops through however many children the menu container has and I queue them free. So what I do is if the menu container has a child, I will get rid of that menu. If there is not a child, then I will create a new instance, which I preloaded that scene that I made up earlier of the pop-up menu. We will create an instance of it, set its rect position. If you remember, control nodes don't have a position, they have a rect position. And we will find what tile we currently are working with. So this tile will be wherever the mouse is currently pointed to. And then we're going to add that menu to where the mouse, ba basically where the mouse is. If I don't have this in menu check here, just to show you what's going on, what will happen is if I go into the menu, I'll still be able to move the box around and it creates confusion of where I'm actually building the turret. So I wanna make sure that I have, that's the point of this check up here. So if we are in a menu, we will skip all this code. So this says if we are not in a menu, we'll move that yellow box around like so, because I like this. I don't want to actually have that box move around. That way it's very clear where this turret is actually gonna go. So now we just have to build the turret. And now we connect. So this ID pressed is actually a built-in function that we can use. Uh, it's You don't have to make a custom signal, you can just uh, click ID pressed, and it will send an ID, so we'll connect it. Now this is again a kind of a hodgepodge way of doing this, but it's a quick, I don't know how my hierarchy of this game actually is going to work on my node structure, so this is just a placeholder to get through. So I need to connect to the script of this node here. And if you remember, the menus are all gonna go into the menu container, so it needs to go up three levels. And that's why it's a triple get parent, which is really ugly. But again, it's just a placeholder. And it will, it will send that ID along to the function build turret, which here, we will match that ID to either the red turret or the purple turret, just like in my previous tutorial. And we will set its position 
to, again, that tile is going to stop tracking once we are in a menu. So we are in this code here, we are following what tile is underneath the mouse. But if we are in a menu, we don't do that. So it is safe to say that the current tile will be where we clicked the menu. So we'll get the map to world from the tile map position to the world position and set the turrets position to that and add it to the tower container. Now, if we don't change the cell to something else, so this tile is one that looks exactly the same, but it isn't the same number. If we don't do that, what will happen is we will be able to build on the same spot multiple times and it will never actually realize that we built there. So you have, since we're checking if we can build by what tile is underneath the mouse, we have to change that tile. So that's one of the drawbacks of this way of checking for the tile. But again, this is the fastest way I could think of setting this up. And then we're going to clear the menu container if we actually Remember, we only go into this function if we actually built and clicked something from the menu. So we'll want the menu to go away, and then we will no longer be in the menu. So one last tip is usually when I make a container, it's just a node 2D. And what can happen in this instance is if you build a turret, if you put multiple turrets, it will render the last turret you place on top of the other ones. So how you fix that is instead of using a node 2D, you can simply use a Y sort. And that will sort the sprites based on its Y position, and it will place it behind if necessary. So that's just a quick little tip bonus. So if you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.